celebrating the 100th anniversary issue of the Fantastic Four. It's all included in this omnibus. So, take an advanced look with me, the Uncanny Omar. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on September 8th, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. And speaking of direct market, that's what we're looking at here. This is the cover to the direct market. On the left, that is the cover to the standard edition. So again, standard edition will be available everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, wherever you get your books. And the one on the right here, the direct market, is only available at your local comic book shop or places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades. So that and the spine are the only difference. Everything else in the book is the exact same thing. So speaking of spine, let's take a look at that spine. This is the new design that Marvel has been using for their reprints of silver slash bronze age books or books that didn't really have a picture down here at the bottom. Um, but so this is volume four and just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like next to the old spine design this is what it would look like but to give you an idea of what it looks like next to the new designs this is exactly what you're going to be looking at on your shelf if you are getting these books for the first time or i guess if you're rebuying them again so we've looked at the front cover and the spine let's look at the back now the so-called mighty marvel manor when done right as by its founders jack kirby and stan lee can be a delight and impossible to put down. Uh, this is from Time Magazine. So that's a nice blurb that I have from Time Magazine. Here are the covers that are collected in this book. Uh, the retail price is $100. By the way, I didn't even talk about this cover. This comes from the 100th issue. It's an anniversary issue and holy crap, it is a huge anniversary because of the creators. Under the dust jacket, it's the Fantastic Four logo right there. A different spine design than the one you saw on the dust jacket and then the four logo. Now, let's get this book open and talk about the stories that are collected in here. So, for the very first time, I present you these stories in omnibus format. Fantastic Four 94 through 125, as well as the Lost Adventure one shot from 2008, and I'll explain what that is here in a little bit, and then material from Fantastic Four annuals eight and nine, which is basically the covers. Here is your table of contents. So kicking it off with a forward by Stan Lee. And most of the forwards that you'll see in this book were originally printed in the Marvel Masterworks. So it's a couple of Marvel Masterworks and then they also reprint the forwards. So this one here by Stan Lee talking about, well, something huge that's about to happen to the Fantastic Four. But let's talk just a little bit about some of these stories. So kicking it off with issue 94, we've had Baby uh, Richards born. But they don't have a name until this issue. Uh, which is also the return of the Frightful Four. So you have uh, the Trapster, Wizard, Medusa, and Sandman. They come back. But we are introduced to a big character in this particular issue, as well as the name. Franklin B. Richards is the name of this child that will forever be a part of the Fantastic Four. And, of course, B, the initial named after Benjamin Grimm. So I thought that was a really sweet moment. Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. Uh, we have the introduction of this lady right here, Agatha Harkness, who plays a big role in, well, I don't want to spoil that, but uh, stuff. She's in stuff. She also plays a big role, of course, in the comics universe, the Marvel Comics universe. But in this issue, we also have, like I mentioned, the return of the Frightful Four. All of these issues right here, I did want to just focus on that one. We have the introduction of the monocle. Uh, Crystal leaving the team, Medusa taking her back. Uh, man, we have so many things in here. We have the return of the Inhumans, but a lot of the things that happen in here happen in. Here's the Inhumans. Uh, did I mention Neil Armstrong? I didn't. They also managed to get him in here. This particular issue right here, the 100th issue. For 100 issues, actually more because we're not including the annuals or specials, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee worked together on this book breaking all sorts of records. As a matter of fact, it went to 102 until sadly Jack Kirby ended up leaving. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second, but this has everything. This has the Thinker, the Puppet Master, Sentry, all of their villains make a huge return in this particular story. Uh, but I won't spoil who else is in there. And then we have this right here. So the story behind issue 102 was actually supposed to be this particular issue 103 but jack kirby sent in some artwork stanley really didn't get the story 
uh, or didn't want to use it. He thought it was too convoluted, so they scrapped it, and he put it on a shelf to be used later. Well, sadly, with issue 102, this issue right here that was supposed to be 103, Jack Kirby turned in his resignation. I think he just wanted to do things differently, so he ended up going to the Distinguished Competition. So when Jack Kirby left, holy crap, I mean, that is 102 consecutive issues written, co-plotted, and drawn by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, and of course, Joe Sinat, who's doing the inks. But that left them in a world of just hurt. Both Stan Lee and the editors that he had at the time, which he didn't really have many because he was transitioning his role, um, had no idea what to do. So they got John Romita Sr., who at the time was drawing Spider-Man. So he couldn't keep a monthly schedule. Hey, Nixon even makes it in here. Uh, to come in and draw some issues of the Fantastic Four. So he only did just a few issues until they got their new ongoing artist. And that is this guy right here, Big John Buscema probably heard me talk a lot about this guy uh, has drawn just about every Marvel character but of course my favorite work he's ever done was Conan the Barbarian so he steps in and it's interesting because both him and John Romita almost have a style like Kirby's it's like they're mimicking Kirby because they were they were really scared and I, I assume they were put in this corner where hey we got to make this book sell. We got to make this transition flow really well. So we have to keep it looking like Kirby. As a matter of fact, there's a few splash pages here that are very Kirby-esque. And speaking of Kirby, there is one more issue in here, issue 108. And the story behind this particular issue is this is the one that, uh, remember when I said that Jack Kirby had drawn this issue, uh, 102, and Stanley said, uh, we'll just shelve it. Well, this is when they brought it back out. They put it back out here, and you had Joe Sinat, uh finish it. I think uh, John Romita actually draws some of the uh, in-between pages. So they shifted the chronological order of the pages, added some new artwork, and pretty much just took his story that Jack Kirby did and made their own new story with a new ending. That's it. So the real story didn't really get to be told. But we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. All the letter pages are included in this volume, just like the previous volumes. I love it. It's like you're really going back like in a time machine to look at the times, to look at what people were feeling, you know, when Jack Kirby left. It's really cool to go back and see these letter pages from all these people uh, that wrote into Marvel. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention yet is the book has 816 pages. Now, I did just recently read a lot of this stuff that was released in epic format. As a matter of fact, that's the cover to the epic, but the Battle of the Behemoths. But it's an interesting shift because you're going to see some of, I don't want to say the worst Fantastic Four stories, but it takes a dip. You could tell how much Jack Kirby did for Fantastic Four. And then when he left, it was like Stan Lee running solo and trying to come up with stories and kind of recycling older stories. And if you've been reading them in chronological order from issue one, you'll see a lot of the stories being recycled. Uh, so in steps Archie Goodwin, who comes in writing the story. And it takes him a while to get flown because he even uh, writes a lot of uh, recycled stories. But there is an awesome team up here with Doctor Doom. I love that issue. I think it's great. Uh, we do have Roy Thomas filling in for one issue. I think it's issue 119. Uh, here's, again, more introductions from the Marvel Masterworks. And then we have the return of Stan Lee. So Stan Lee does come back. Uh, I think he was busy transitioning his role to being a publisher uh, or something like that. I can't remember. This is the Roy Thomas issue featuring Black Panther. But by issue 120, we have Stan Lee coming back and he's introducing this character right here, Gabriel Airwalker, who is, well, who has ties to another big character. And I think if you've seen my overview of the Epic Collections, you know who that big character is. And he's a big character, not just for the Fantastic Four, but for the entire Marvel Universe. So let's keep going back here. Then we have something that Stan Lee loves doing. This was a character he introduced earlier, the monster. But he loved Monster Tales. Him and Jack Kirby working together. Those the monster omnibus books, there's a two-volume set. That stuff is awesome. Because it's just Stan Lee and Jack Kirby having fun. Almost like this kaiju kind of fun with some of these monster characters. Uh, but he does do this story with Big John Buscema. And then the back here, we have the extras. Where these are the covers to annuals number 8 and 9. Which were just reprints of previously released issues. Uh, this is a Dick Ayers forward from 2006. Joe Sinat writing his forward from 2006. 
and then Roy Thomas talking about oh this is his Fantastic Four um, little pitch that he did. This is before he became he was he was a kid getting the Fantastic Four off of the deuce stands, and then eventually got the role the job at Marvel. Mark Evanier talking about uh, the transition from issues uh, from Jack Kirby transitioning to the new artist and talking about his experience with Jack Kirby, his personal experience becoming an assistant. This is really cool. This is pretty much everything that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby did in the first 102 issues of the Fantastic Four. Um, I think everything in blue are key events and introduction of new characters. And it's insane the amount of stories that they were able to tell in 102 issues. Now, that record has been broken since then by um, uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley on the pages of Ultimate Spider-Man, a consecutive run. That was huge. And this is the story of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four 108. And so here's the introduction by John Morrow. And then they talk about the pages that were originally there and why they decided to shift the pages around when issue 108 came out. And then in 2008, finally, here, let's get to it. We got this, the Fantastic Four, the Lost Adventure. So we do have Joe Sinat doing the finishes, but we have a colorist and we're giving the colorist credit because back then they didn't give colorists any credit. This is Chris Sotomayor, uh, but it is Jack Kirby's original story and just finished by Joe Sinat, who was the inker at the time, and then Stan Lee supplying the dialogue. So really cool that we finally got the full story in 2008, years, well, since sadly years since um, Jack Kirby had passed. Some house ads, and I've always loved this piece right here. I think anybody that has been in the comics for even a month has seen this piece floating around. It's Jack the King Kirby and all his creations there. Wait, with the exception of Namor. I mean, he did bring him back, but anyway. Uh, but here's a poster from 1970. It's really cool. I wonder how you would get the posters. I wonder if you had to mail in something to get from Marvel themselves. Unused cover by Jack Kirby here for issue 94. Original art here for the cover to issue 95. And then, of course, original pages. And, oh my God, to have that original 100th issue. Now, there was the uh, standard edition cover that you saw, of course, is kind of a take on that with Arthur Adams just piling in as many characters as he can. Oh my god, that thing is a thing of beauty. There's more John Buscema now original artwork. And I think I showed this off in the epic. But they used, uh, there was something wrong with the printing error that a few copies of Fantastic Four 110 went out looking like this, like the negative. So the original colors were supposed to look like this, but the printer accidentally sent some out like this. So if you own one, eh, that's really cool actually gives it a creepy look to it, especially when you get Agatha Harkness there. More original artwork there. Let's skip some to get to the... Okay, so here's some reprints right here from Marvel Select's Fantastic Four line. All those were supplied by Alan Davis. And then this is Marvel Masterworks when they recolor a lot of the covers. And this is what I was talking about. So if you have the standard edition, this is what the standard edition looks like. Look how many freaking characters Arthur Adams put in there. That is insane. He didn't hold back. Nice homage to issue 100. All right, uh, let's talk about this binding. We have 816 pages. This one here is printed at the Donley printer. And here's what your eye looks like. We've seen bigger, but we've also seen a lot smaller, but there you go. Just properly opened it. I haven't had a chance to read it because I read the epics and there's a lot of books coming out this week. But I think, you know, probably able to tell as I was flipping through here how the book lays over towards the front the middle, and towards the back. But yes, Fantastic Four, Omnibus Volume 4, give me that five, baby. I want to keep it going in this oversized format. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. 
Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up. And if you are picking it up, which cover you're going to go for. You're going to go for the direct market cover, the standard edition cover. Again, this is the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.